Hi everybody, welcome back to Sharon from Vivid Days. We are going to be exploring Let's Resin Mold for Jewellery and their resin for also making jewellery. I've measured out part A and part B, uh, a total of 50 has been mixed up and I am delicately adding a little bit of gold leaf and silver leaf. Now the thing that I learnt from doing this part is every time you're introducing something, you're introducing mobbles. So take that into consideration. When you're mixing it, you want to mix it thoroughly, mix for the manufactured guides, but try and introduce as less bubbles as possible. And sometimes heating up the outer packaging, what am I trying to say? The cups or the areas or letting it wait, let the bubbles come to the surface before you start to add it, is probably a hot tip for you. Following the manufacturing guide as well is a hot tip and uh, they give you the tip of pinching the end and using a toothpick to gently get the bubble out at the nose of these otherwise it's going to naturally have um, a defect at the end of the point so taking your time so less is more work on a few at a time I demonstrated the whole array that comes in this packet uh, but I just chose to work on a few pieces uh, just until I learn and master because this is a learning for me I've not really explored the jewelry too much and I, th I wanted to give it a go any way I can bling myself up and um, I worked with the colours that also come uh, from Let's Resin and I found that you did have to apply a drop at a time but I needed more than what I thought I would need um, because I'm used to working with stronger pigments for resin art. Having said that, the subtleness that you get with these covers when you demold, I think it's pretty stunning. So you'll see me just exploring different ways. I think I'm going to invest in some shringers so that I can get my resin into the nooks and crannies a little bit easier and take the time to remove the bubbles and perfections and um, I really did like this purple I explored having a couple that were just clear with the resin and the gold leaf and the silver leaf and then I tried with the blue and the purple didn't have a lot of resin mixed didn't have a lot of time just wanted to really have a play and have a feel and you get to see the end results and there's some learns along the way people that are proficient in this I apologize but any tips tricks or wisdom to share with the community pop the comments in there but you're going to get to see the end results and as I turn them into pieces of jewelry and thank you for your support thumbs up subscribe share comments are always welcome and have an amazing day Hi everybody, you watched me explore the Let's Resin jewellery moulds um, last night. So we're here just to review them. For the um, for your time, I have popped most of these out, but I will show you uh, what they look like. But I have kept one to pop out and they have released really well from this mould and really impressed with the resin as well. So I'm going to have left the one that we're going to struggle to get out of here, aren't I? Just difficult. No, here we go. There we go. So you saw me spending a little bit of time with the ends, making sure there was no air bubbles there. Probably what I need to perfect is there's a few raised edges here. So what you are going to see is me come in and lightly sand these to see if I can get them smooth. And if not, I'll research how I do that. But I have successfully, oh, other than that one piece there, one bubble there. I can fill that in that's okay but let me bring you on so this is one shape I'll just keep saying shapes they're all a bit different the ends have been protected there's no air bubbles you can just see floating ones in the middle but that's not taking anything so the resin set beautifully and I quite like the look of the simple gold oh not holding it up the gold and transparent resin add a little bit of silver here and there's a common theme it's just this area here where the molds come out just here I've probably built it up a little bit too high and created a dome which is not what you want to do so I'll see if I can sand that down and then what I will do is show you what they look like when I add a little bit of chain on there but it's definitely a thumbs up they've come out nice and shiny the shapes are just beautiful and if you take your time and follow the instructions like pinching the end getting rid of the air bubbles it's good and the pigments are quite light for the jewelry because they're not intense now with this one I left it clear and added the blue uh, but I'm just experimenting at this stage and I love 
the transparency and the subtleness of some of these colours and the shapes. So watch me as I sand them back and I'll tell you if I have success and share my uh, what I did with you. Uh, but they're moulds you can use over and over again. Absolutely love them. I definitely will come back and revisit different concepts and try and perfect it. Uh, but I'll stop speaking now. We'll come back after I've sanded it and I'll attach some chain to them and show you some possibilities, hopefully. All right. Speak soon. So what I plan on doing is using this very fine sandpaper, which is a P800. I'm going to cut it into tiny little strips and very delicately just catch the edge. And then I might need to see whether I'm going to have to come and buff it around with a nail, nail polish, not nail, <laughs> nail to hook it or anything specifically for resin. And I'm loving exploring a new thing you can do with resin. And if you are experiencing this, give me a little comment and tip of what you would do. Anyway, so I'm just going to concentrate in that area because I don't want to scuff any other area in the resin. Yeah, that's making it, it's still going to be raised and beveled, but it's taking that sharpness off. Hi, I've gone as far as I can go um, this evening. So I'll show you what I've done and talk to you about some of the processes. But when I do get more jewelry making kit, I'll come back and show you what I did. Basically, I have gone and very lightly sanded all of this. So there is no sharp raised edge now, but I will look at perfecting that um, because I, I want it to look as good as the other ones. There's a slight dip. So I could come in and I could dome it. So on this one, I'll do another video because this is the one that's got the tiny little bubble. Is it that one? No, it's this one. So this one's got the tiny little hole in the bubble where I didn't follow, follow closely the manufacturer's instructions. And what I'm going to do is use this as my trial piece and come in and see if I can dome that slightly so it's raised rather than concave. But they are all successfully sanded down and you can't really notice them too much. You can feel it, but not because they're sharp, just because it slightly goes in. Now, the reason I've stopped with the jewellery is some of these are quite chunky at the end and I don't have the right hoops, silver hoops to go through. However, moulds love potential love first attempt not too blooming bad if i do say so myself and just to give you a couple of ideas of what they could look like as a finished product so this one oh i hope you can see that yep this one has been done with a silver chain a long one that's the way i prefer them but there's also this one here which is like a velvet necktie so it's not leather it's velvet so for animal friendly people hopefully that gives them a choice. So I've looked at different lengths and what I've done is these circles here. Now, this has been a learning curve for me. I need to get some bigger ones. So I'm just ordering those off Amazon now to go through some of the bigger pieces here. Uh, but I've hooked it on and my chain is silver, said that. And then I added my two end pieces. But that's quite nice, quite sparkly. And I'd wear it. Don't know if you would, but I would. And this one, yeah, so you've got a different choice. So you might be able to give your customers a couple of choices. So around here, this is a jewellery making kit you can get from Amazon directly. It gives you a nice little selection. But what I found is there's not a big variation in the little hoops. Now, people out there who's proficient at jewellery making might be able to say, you know what, 
you can use some of these wires you've got Sharon, to do that but I'm not that confident and I'm going to research where all these different bits do and I really do enjoy jewelry myself so I'm going to have a little bit of an explore there you do get some of the um, copper wire and silver wire especially for jewelry and you get these natty little things so you know if it's something I continue working on I'll build up my collection but from a starter kit not too bad and I also ordered myself some silver chain uh, it does have all the class that you need in there and um, stainless steel this one this one's silver but these are stainless steel and these are the velvet straps you can have as an alternate for the chains and I've also got myself some organza different color bags so that if I'm selling them um, it just finishing it off anyway I'm sure that the proficient people out there have got way better ideas than me but as a beginner somebody that wants to dabble in it it's just about building up your confidence now this resin is lovely I'm going to perfect it it's still got a little bit of curing there's a little bit of bend in there but it is one that's specifically for you know jewelry so give it a go I say I hope you enjoyed this video thumbs up subscribe share comments are always welcome make sure you do come back and visit me and if you've got any tips and tricks that you think that the viewers might appreciate so I'm trying to uh, move my gammy fingers I've never got nice hands because I'm always arting um if you've got any ideas let me know if you're interested in more jewelry let me know and I will come back when I've got the bigger loops and show you how I actually did this piece of myself anyway I love you and leave you wherever you are in the world be safe and yeah much love